use questions to understand. We also use questions to stump other people and to test their knowledge and understanding. Today's scripture starts with a group posing an interesting, if not rather ridiculous, question to Jesus. Curious? Continue with me as we begin with a call to worship. On this day of memories, we gather to sing and to pray. We remember the past and look to the future. On this day when the guns and cannons fell silent, we come before you, God, seeking your peace. On this day of hope, in the face of terror, we come before you, God, believing in your promise. Let us worship together, God together, in peace. We begin with the hymn, Bring Many Names. As we come into this time of worship, we open our hearts and minds to the invitation of God to be with, with God and in God's presence. Let us pray. God, our creator and redeemer, we gather in your presence at this solemn time, aware of how much war has cost the world you love. In spite of fighting between nations and neighbors, you have come to us in Jesus Christ, carrying no sword, calling us to serve as peacemakers. In this time of worship, renew in us the hope that you will turn our swords into plowshares and lead the world from the study of war to the promise of peace with justice for all your people. God of mercy, we confess that the world around us is in a mess. Countries turn arguments over territory into threats of terror. Old enemies stir up conflict within their tribes and nations. The threat of violence keeps us all on edge. Forgive us for not leaning from, learning from past conflicts what leads to peace with justice. God of wisdom, we turn to the scripture for insight and understanding. 
Send your spirit to open our hearts and minds to receive the challenge and the comfort you offer through your word. Amen. The prophet Micah reminds us that God requires of us three things, to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with our God. To all who turn away from hostility and seek reconciliation in kindness and humility, God offers forgiveness and peace. The peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. We turn now to a scripture taken from Luke. Uh, it's a story about um, Jesus being challenged by some a group of people, uh, and you'll hear about them. A word from the Lord. The scripture reading today is taken from Luke 20, verses 27 to 38. Some Sadducees, who sit, those who say there is no resurrection, came to him and asked him a question. Teacher, Moses wrote for us that if a man's brother dies, he know but no children, the man shall marry the widow and raise up children for his brother. Now, there were seven brothers. The first married and died childless. Then the second and the third married her. And so in the same way, all seven died childless. Finally, the woman also died. In the resurrection, therefore, whose wife will the woman be? For the seven had married her. Jesus said to them, Those who belong to this age marry and are given in marriage. But those who are considered worthy of a place at that age and in the resurrection from the dead neither marry nor are given in marriage. Indeed, they cannot die anymore because they are like angels and are children of God, being children of the resurrection. And the fact that the dead are raised, Moses himself showed in the story of the bush, where he speaks of the Lord as the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Now he is God, not of the dead, but of the living. For to him, all of them are alive. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Questions, questions, questions. Or maybe it should be challenge, challenge, challenge. Toddlers who are learning about the world are full of why questions. Why is the sky blue? Why do I have to zip up my coat in cold weather? Or 20 below weather maybe is a better way to put it. Why do I have to get dressed at all? As we age, we find the questions get harder and the answer is not so easy to come by. Especially in this time of people assuming that their opinions are fact. But maybe this is not so far from what Jesus was facing in this story, in which he is being questioned, actually challenged by a group called the Sadducees. Now, to put this into context, Jesus is in the temple at Jerusalem. He has been facing the questions and challenges of chief priests, scribes, and Pharisees. Now, they have all been answers, answered in ways that they were not able, in the presence of the people, to trap Jesus by what he said. And being amazed by his answers, they became silent. Well, now that the Sadducees figure, well, now the Sadducees figure they'll take a run at this. The Sadducees were like the rich elite of the temple who had wealth, power, and prestige. They also did not believe in the resurrection. Reverend Dr. David Weber uh, says this about the group. To understand what is going on here, Luke tells us that, sa that the Sadducees do not believe in the resurrection. But he does not tell us that the Sadducees were well-to-do folk in the community. It makes sense if you think about it. When you have all that the world has to offer, why bother with something beyond it? When you can claim that being rich is a sign of God's favor and blessing on your life, then why not go all in on that? Oh, they had a sense of eternity, but it was in their legacy and in their children. 
Your name survives you. That's what you were working for. It is why this ridiculous story in question regarding the widow who marries seven brothers and has no children with any of them. So who will she be united with in marriage? Whose wife will she be in the resurrection? Again, a little background may be helpful as those of us, especially the women, may be having more than a little difficulty with this text. At the time of Jesus, women were considered property. Much of their value came in the fact that they could have children that would allow the name of the husband to carry on into the future. That was their hope. This was important to men. Today, women, at least in Western culture, are free to marry who they wish or not to marry. They may choose to have children or not to have children. There are also many women and couples who would love to have children, but who are unable to for various reasons. And this type of text can really hurt when read with a 21st century sensibility. Needless to say, there are a lot of problems with this text when trying to get to the hope that is there. We have to clear away a lot of the clutter around culture and history. Maybe we can set aside all of the entrapment that the Sadducees were playing into and look at Jesus' response. What has been really incredible in this story, and the ones just preceding it, is that Jesus continually meets the questioners where they are at. He didn't ridicule, but rather would turn the question around and in that plant seeds of understanding and hope that would maybe help someone. Remember, there were crowds listening to all of this bantering back and forth. In the case of the Sadducees, they only saw the first five books of the Torah as the true scriptures. Those first five books are attributed to Moses, and so Jesus uses his knowledge of scripture and speaks to them about resurrection from that perspective. He says, Those who belong to this age marry and are given in marriage. But those who are considered worthy of a place in that age and in the resurrection from the dead, neither marry nor are given in marriage. Jesus speaks about this age and that age. We will live in two different times. This age is the time of our living in our human bodies. The time of that age is when we are fully in God's presence after our earthly death. For Jesus, resurrection as God's children is the promise. And again, in facing the question, or maybe riddle is a better word, posed to him by the Sadducees, he goes to Moses, the one they revere, for his answer. Jesus, quoting Moses and the Torah, says, And the fact that the dead are raised, Moses himself showed in the story about the bush, where he speaks of the Lord as the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Now, he is God, not of the dead, but of the living, for to him all of them are alive. Moses speaks of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob as ones who are presently living, even though they had died long before Moses came onto the scene. Jesus met the Sadducees in their understanding. Though they wanted to demean Jesus in the eyes of the crowd, he instead took their question seriously. He saw the conversation, even this adversarial conversation, as an opportunity to engage others, not to belittle them with his knowledge and understanding, but as a way to plant seeds. The seeds were seeds of promise, understanding, healing, and above all, hope. Those who were listening in the crowds were not all well-to-do. Many were suffering in oppression, including the women for whom their well-being was tied to marriage and childbearing. But also, there was hope for those who were oppressed by Roman, by Roman occupying forces, were slaves, or just working their bodies to utter depletedness in order to care for themselves and those whom for whom they were responsible. The scripture seems to say that the quality of life, 
The character of our lives will be different in the age to come. That time after death when we are fully living our lives as children of God in God's presence. Life after death is not just a continuation of this life in some beautiful way, where all our human relationships continue as we experience them now. For now, much of this is really a mystery. It may well be, though, that we do recognize each other in some special way based on how we knew each other in this life. That is good news for those who had loving relationships in this life. For others, it may also be good news that the relationships with loved ones will be something different in a coming age, particularly if those relationships were harmful or burdensome. What this story of the Sadducees and any of the previous stories of people questioning Jesus does do is give us permission to ask questions. Not in a way that demeans or is meant for harm, but rather to say we don't really understand everything. Jesus is open to your questions, as is God. These stories show that. Jesus' response also shows that he is patient. Patient. In our time, we may find answers in scripture. We may also find answers to questions in our conversations with one another through study and reflection. Some questions just can't be answered in this age. Jesus' example of answering questions can also be helpful in our time when we are in conversations with others. Regardless of the intent of another with their line of reasoning and questioning, May we have the presence of mind to meet them where they are at. Maybe we can listen and understand their context and from there plant new seeds of hope. As was stated again by Dr. Weber, meet folks where they are, speak in their language, and then let the spirit work. After all, we've got an eternity to work with. With or without questions, our hope remains and is steadfast. In Jesus' words, he says, and I just did a little bit with the uh, pronouns, indeed, we cannot die anymore because we are like angels and are children of God, being children of the resurrection. Truly blessed be the tie that binds us to Jesus and not to the things of this world in Christ, with Christ, and through Christ. Amen. We come now to holding all that we have been reflecting upon, uh, thinking, and hold it along with our concerns for the world in the prayers of the people. Let us pray. Loving God, in and out of season, in times of poverty and prosperity, in times of sorrow and joy, in times of war and in times of peace, you have been present with your people. As we gather again at this time of remembrance, we recall those who gave their lives in war so that others might live in freedom and peace. May they dwell in peace in your eternal presence. We remember those whose bodies, minds, and souls are scarred by war and whose lives will forever bear the wounds of trauma, violence, and loss. We remember the continuing courage and sacrifice of the women and men who serve in the Canadian Armed Forces and their families. We remember all those innocents who have been caught up in the world's power struggles, those who have lost their homes and livelihoods, those who now seek safe refuge in other countries, and children who have no sense of security or hope for the future. We remember those who make and keep peace here and around the world and offer you thanks for those who work to shape just laws and tend to the common good. We remember God's grace and care in time of need, conflict, or crisis, whether between nations, within families, at the workplace, or among friends. We remember all those loved ones who have gone before us into your eternal rest and embrace of pure love. Let there be peace, Lord, and let it begin with us, each of us, we pray in the name of the Prince of Peace, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, 
The power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. If you consider St. Andrew's your church, regardless of where you live, would like to more, learn more about St. Andrew's, get involved in our ministry and work, or make a donation toward the life and ministry of St. Andrew's here in Thunder Bay, please visit our website at standrewspress-tbay.ca. We turn now to a hymn to gather all of what we've done in this worship together. Immortal, invisible, God only wise. Jesus calls us to be peacemakers, so pray for peace, work for peace, trust that peace is possible through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, and the blessing of God, source, Savior, and Spirit of life be with you now and always. Amen. Thank you.